Assalamu alaikum and hello. My name is Atash and I've been teaching computer science and electrical engineering for the past 15 years. In these 15 years, I have had the opportunity to work with brilliant people in my life and start a few software companies, including Park Wheels. So it's my first time at Habib, thank you organizers, and it's an honor to share my thoughts on innovation, what is innovation, why we need to do innovation, and how we can innovate. So allow me to share some memories from when I had just graduated from university, back in 1993. I was applying to grad schools, and I was lucky enough to send out emails to universities. Yes, emails were around at that time. So I sent out emails to the university, but here is the full story. I had to travel from Rawalpindi to Islamabad to send out emails to these universities and then go back a couple of days later to find out if any replies has arrived. So that was the state of internet at that time. Very, very primitive from today's standard. But that was not just in Pakistan. Even the use of email was limited in the US to industry and academia, not to common homes. Fast forward just one year, I was in the grad school and this friend of mine, he comes up to me and says, hey dude, have you checked out Mosaic? And I'm thinking, knowing this guy, who this Mosaic person might be? You know, turned out it wasn't the name of a Mona Lisa. No, it was the first web browser. Mosaic is known to be the first web browser which has paved the way to, to the internet and the World Wide Web. So after Mosaic, like, life was easy. I put up my web page on university web server. There were only a couple of dozen students in the entire university who had web pages at that time. In the university which has a strength of 14,000 students. So all the web pages of the students were directly linked from the main page of the university. So very few people had web pages, not too many sites around at that time. There was no eBay, no PayPal, no Amazon, no Facebook, and there was no Google. You didn't need Google. There were not too many sites to search for. And then it started getting crowded. Silicon Valley was embracing a new face. Uh, having gone through the computing revolution for the past 20 years, it was going through the web revolution or looking forward to the web revolution or internet revolution. Fast forward a few years, I was interning at Bell Labs in New Jersey and this friend of mine, the Mosaic guy, he calls me from California and says that, hey, you check out Google, and I'm thinking that, what is this Google thing, you know? And I knew immediately that it wasn't the name of a person. So I searched for the term Google in the most popular web browser, at web um, search engine at that time, and that was Alta Vista. So I searched for Google, broke all the ties with Alta Vista for good, so went to Google. So that was, that was 1998, seven, eight, nine years later, and we have a story that pretty much every one of us knows about. There are more than 1.5 billion users of Facebook. And we have seen this story in the movie, The Social Network, the Facebook story. So why these stories about the birth of the World Wide Web, the birth of Google and Facebook relevant or important in today's topic? Because all of these are the examples of innovation. They answer, what is innovation? So my first question, what is innovation, is answered by these, by these things. So innovation can be done in a disruptive way when you create a need for something like Apple has done with smartphone and Facebook has done with social network. And it can also be progressive, like a new model of your favorite automobile or maybe a new feature in an operating system that you like. So after that, you know, innovation means that you have a circle around you. There is a circle of skill set and knowledge around you and you cross that border you go to the uncharted territory and you think about things that did not exist and you create a need for that. So having answered that, let me answer why it is important to, to innovate. Let me try to answer that in two ways. What happens, what good happens when you innovate and what happens if you stop innovating? So to answer the, answer the first part of the question, what good might happen when you innovate? Let me ask you, how many of you know about Estonia? Well, some people will know about it, or maybe many people will know about it. Well, if I ask, do you know what is the capital of Estonia? Well, even fewer people will know about the capital of Estonia, which is Tallinn. But if I ask the question, how many of you know about Skype? Skype, which is the most popular, arguably the most popular communication internet engine 
for business and individuals communicating with each other. So lots of people will know Skype. Skype is a product of Estonia, came out of Tallinn, which is the capital of Estonia. So Skype is a product of Estonia and it pushed the Estonian economy up, created a culture of startups in, in Estonia. So these guys sitting in Estonia innovated this new kind of a communication mechanism you know, with the best codex available and created Skype, which is now known worldwide. So what happens, what happens when you do these kind of things? The economies go up. We have lots of examples of that. Nokia for Finland, Ericsson for Sweden, lots of companies in Germany, and lots and lots of companies in Silicon Valley and the entire US. So they have all pushed the economies of the countries up. So to answer the, the other part of the, of the question, you know, what happens if you do not innovate, if you stop innovating? Maybe you become redundant, maybe you become stagnant. And we have lots of examples for that as well. It is not a surprise, it is not a surprise to see that Apple is not the first smartphone maker. But it is very disappointing that we may not even know the name of the first smartphone maker. It was Handspring and Palm together. These guys are not around. Well, maybe they are around, but they are doing something else. So very disappointing because they stopped innovating. Another example of that would be Blockbuster. So people who are familiar with the US culture from 20 years ago, they would know that Blockbuster was the default movie rental company in the US. Stopped innovating and Netflix took over. So everything moved to Netflix. Nobody re video rents these days. At that time, there was an offer from Netflix and Blockbuster to combine hands. But they refused to do that. They couldn't see beyond. So they are not around these days. So these examples tell us that it is very important for the economies, for the individuals, for the businesses to keep on innovating and not stop innovating. So economies thrive when they innovate. If you stop innovating, economies will go down, companies will go bankrupt, and individuals will become redundant. So having answered why we need to keep innovating, let's move to the third part of the question. The third part of the, of the question is, how we can innovate. I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm sorry to share that there is no secret sauce for that. It all is about the attitude, about the willpower. So there are many, many elements of innovation. You need to strengthen each of those. So I'm just gonna talk about three main ingredients, three main innovation elements that are very close to me, that are very dear to me, and I have followed those. So first one is observation. The other one is courage, and the other one is determination. So observation, courage, and determination. So how can you polish these three elements of, of innovation? So in order to increase the innovation power, in order to make sure that you observe things, what are the problems lying around, what are the needs you know, in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, you know, come up with a new energy solution. So for doing that, you have to make sure that you have an attitude of learning. We go to school for that. You know. There is a boundary of knowledge around us. We expand that boundary by learning new things. That's not innovation. Innovation is going across that boundary. But we expand that boundary when we go to college. So that is something that we can do. We can keep an attitude of learning. So I've been out of university for the last, last 20 years. I still go and you know, check some videos on YouTube, you know, learning new courses, data science, machine learning. So there are many, many you know, to-do lists in my, in my reading list. So in order to answer this question of observation, then we have this circle around us, circle of knowledge, which we could expand by reading, by going to college, by expanding our, our knowledge base. We still need to go across that boundary. We need to have courage to go across that boundary. So human nature is that we only think about the things which seem possible to us, thinking about something which is impossible or which is beyond our skill set, which is beyond our knowledge boundary. It's very difficult. We need willpower to cross that. So it's like a student sitting in the class, not being able to ask a question, which might look, which might seem stupid to others, but he has to overcome that fear, has to have the courage to ask that question. So once you ask that question, once you try to cross that boundary, 
then that is the courage that you need to, to innovate, to go to that uncharted territory. Once you cross that boundary, well, you become uncomfortable. When you become uncomfortable, it's very natural to come back to the circle. So that's the, that leads to the third element of innovation, which is determination. So I would like to share a very short story here. I never learned swimming as a, as a kid. The first time I was in the pool was in grad school. One summer, six weeks, one hour per week, and before I knew it, the summer was over. For six years, I didn't go into the pool until a startup company that I worked for bought us gym membership. So I went in the pool another few weeks, you know, one hour, two hours a week, and back to square one. Didn't know swimming. So meanwhile, in other factions of life, I have learned that 99% success is a very big failure. You have to cross that line. You have to go over the finish line. So a couple of months ago, Lums put together this nice big pool. And although my 10-year-old is, is my role model, but I know I will finish the line. I will be able to do the length in a month or maybe two weeks or four weeks. So to end this, I would like to challenge you. I would like to challenge you to take that trip where you have only gone in your dreams. So make yourself uncomfortable and do that often. Keep that fire in the belly burning. So more power to you for this endeavor on the path of innovation. Thank you very much.